Hey, what's up guys? So today I got my hands on this newly released Delta 5540 series. Uh, I was very curious uh, to do a little uh, review on it uh, to see what type of uh, specs and options uh, Dell offers as well as I would like to remove the bottom side of this laptop just to see what's cooking inside. So please join me on my little adventure here and let's go! So in terms of specs, I would like to mention that Dell offers about seven different configurations in terms of uh, processor type. Uh, so it's a uh, 13th generation obviously, it's uh, five, uh, 4 for Core i5 and uh, three different uh, configurations for Core i7. In terms of uh, memory, RAM, storage and uh, screen resolution, there are only two options available. So for memory RAM, you can go either with a DDR4 or DDR5. Obviously, I would suggest you to go with a DDR5 as it's simply more efficient and faster. Uh, for uh, storage, there is uh, either 256 or 512 gig of uh, fourth generation solid state drive. So if you'd like to get any larger size, you would have to install it yourself. For LCD screen, there is either, uh, there's again two options available. It's either FHD touch or non-touch with uh, both of them 250 nits available. Uh, so for the battery, there is only one option, 3 cell 54 watt and the standard type C 65 watt power adapter. However, most favorite part about this laptop is actual external ports and let me tell you why. Compared to many newer models where the only option you were giving is type C port and you have to carry a bunch of adapters along, Dell 5540 has SD card slot audio port two USB ports, one full-size HDMI port, and one VLAN port. On the left side, laptop has a two type C ports, and I think it's pretty amazing. There's a few points I would like to mention about the external body of this laptop. So the plastic, 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 same old. There is nothing really changed. Uh, there is no carbon fiber or any inclusions on it. The webcam, uh, actually they did upgrade and install the privacy on it so you don't have to put any stickers anymore or over your camera and worry about that, which is a good sign. Then I will move forward to the keyboard. Uh, honestly, the keyboard to me was uh, completely new. So compared to the previous versions, uh, it felt stiffer, but I still think down part is having the power button on the keyboard. It should be installed separately so if in case it fails it can be replaced without replacing the whole keyboard so touchpad was pretty decent as well all right my friends so now it's time to pull the bottom case out just to see how everything looks inside and if it, any any difference between uh, this model and all the previous ones uh, the best part of what I've noticed, the screws or uh, have all screws on the bottom side have internal clips, so uh, you don't need to remove them, so they're not going to get lost. And now I'm actually trying to pull the bottom case out and with my pry tool, and it popped super easy. And now we can see all the internals. Here you go. So what I've noticed is all the external ports are being mounted directly to the motherboard. Here's a heatsink with a cooling fan. The battery speakers, there are two of them. And now I'm actually looking into the uh, some ports. So this is for, uh, for the internet. Uh, here we can see that there is a 512 gig fourth generation storage, but as you can see, there is an additional uh, second slot available, so you always can uh, add additional uh, and upgrade it. So here also, as you can see, there are two DDR4 memory RAM slots. There is a 16 gig in one of them, but based on my research, 
for Core i5 13th generation, you can actually install up to 64 gigs. So it's uh, pretty, pretty reasonable. Well, thank you very much for watching. Please guys, subscribe to our channel so we can post more videos. See you next time.